All right, guys. It is another cold, gray, yuck, depressing winter day here in April, Sunday, April 8th, 2018, and uh, it looks like my garden barely got kissed by Jack Frost last night. Good God, one more degree and this entire fucking garden would be gone right now. Well, except for the lettuce and the turnip greens who seem to be loving this winter weather in April. I came goddamn close to uh, losing my entire garden last night with this bizarre little blast of Arctic winter in April. <clears throat> anyway, speaking of that, uh, this is going to be my comment of the day addressing the you know you know i love you guys i i, I spend two fucking hours you know on my uh, on my real rants of the day and and get however many views however many comments and then i spend like 90 seconds like 90 seconds uh basically just just working on the problems i'm having with my video card reader on this computer uh, trying to <coughs> figure out what to do about this and uh, so I did like this 90 second video on the fact that it was uh, by two o'clock yesterday afternoon the temperature in Austin Texas had plummeted from 86 a few hours before to 43 with a wind chill factor of 37 degrees and uh, put this little video out there before I headed into Austin, Texas to go to a hot rod show and uh, a bunch of comments on that and we're going to look at three of them. Uh, the first one actually directed at the subject of the video and this is from Alert Tribes member Bill Hilly. I guess CT is Connecticut. <coughs> Bill Hilly is doing the same weird weather thing around here in Connecticut. Most recently it's like February weather in April and there is actually on the mainstream media news today this very this very story uh, how it the the temperatures in the eastern US are February temperatures in April while over there on the other side of the world we have July temperatures showing up at the end of March anyway getting back to Bill Hilly <clears throat> Uh, most recently, it's like February weather in April. Unstable jet stream, no doubt. <coughs> I put it to clueless fucking morons like this. By the time you notice the symptoms, it's too late to treat the cancer. So, go and have some more kids and fly your fat, useless ass to California for your six-year-old nephew's birthday party. Be sure to get him some pointless, toxic, plastic shit from China that came over to the U.S. on a whale-dicing, heave-bunker oil-burning super container ship while you're at it. And most importantly, feel good about it. You are a modern, fossil fuel-empowered consumer with good credit. Your consumer life choices are beautiful we are so fucked and uh so next we're going to hear from my neighbor just down the street who i still hope to get together with brother this is brother nielsen alhambra from uh somewhere outside of bastrop texas i can't read this whole thing i'm gonna read the beginning and end of it <clears throat> yeah I'm running the space heater and the dog is stretched out on the bed and neither of us wants to go feed the sheep. So, to procrastinate, I'm going to tell a story that is not apocryphal, but I think is allegorical 
and this is a good story but it just takes too long to tell in a comment of the day but you can go to and read this yourself I want to uh, jump ahead though and he's and he moves from talking about the the cold weather in uh, Bastrop Texas I think he's more commenting on my video from the day before about the the great mystery uh, of, of why these, these scientists, particularly these climatologists, ecologists, biologists, and of course all the people like in the goddamn uh, United Nations and the World Bank they advise are just too fucking chicken shit to be honest about what's going on on this planet. And uh, this is what Brother Nielsen <clears throat> had to, uh, this was the bottom line of this long story he, story he told. <clears throat> don't think for a second that these institutions don't know the facts. They know. They have to know. It's more than trillions of dollars at risk. It's more than the risk of billions of people having to go on the move and into confrontation. Those inside globalist governance understand they are going to have to try to manage the end of civilization. Those in the private corporations spend millions to know this. That alone gives them the excuse for their conclusions to remain private and it could cost them billions to be wrong about it. Just search Omnitrax Churchill Hudson Bay Rail to see the outcome of misunderstanding climate change's outcomes in the Arctic. That is exactly why connecting the dots as Hambone does is important to those of us here on the outside. There you go. Thank you for that. And uh, anyway, but we're going to move uh, one more time. I really uh, like our one of our new tribes members, Diane Jones. Uh, new to the tribe, trying to figure out what the fuck we're all about down here in the um, in the Doomosphere on Humpty Dumpty tribe. <clears throat> Take it away, Diane. The real reason the world does not need any more babies is because you are like 7.6 billion whiny babies all rolled into one. I don't think I have ever met a baby quite as whiny as you, Mr. Littletail. It's like walking into the maternity ward at feeding time. And uh, so... I guess she was talking about that I was whining that the uh, fucking weather was freezing cold in uh, Austin, Texas, getting ready to destroy my garden. So one more time, Diane, and, and, and uh, for your new tribes members and for you clueless fucking tribes members who have been here for years and still don't get it. One more time. <clears throat> As a new tribes member, Diane, you have not yet mastered the art of nuance and critical thinking necessary to differentiate between a whine and a rant. The ability to make this distinction is what separates the eco-Nazis from the clueless fucking morons. You are making progress as this short video you know, about the cold weather in Austin, sort of blurred the lines, kind of blurred the lines between a rant and a whine. But here is the basic rule. I, I've done full videos, but this is the bottom line basic rule. Essentially, we, we are so fucked is a rant while... I am so fucked is a whine. You are so fucked is just kind of a no shit Sherlock statement to anyone on the planet 
particularly anyone under the age of 50. So my never ending uh, futile quest to uh, try to get people to understand the difference between a rant and a whine. It's not that hard. Okay? When I am whining, as I do with my depressed collapsitarian whines on Thursday, when I am talking about my poor, poor, pitiful me, little pointless, useless, miserable existence uh, on this fucking collapsing planet, just w w you know, wishing nothing more than, than than I could just go to sleep and never fucking wake up to, to ever face another goddamn day in this prison sentence called my fucking life. That's a whine. When I am, am, am doing uh, rants about uh, every other earthling that we share this planet with being taken down by us whiny little little spoiled rotten uh, little pointless miserable brats that is a rant one day Diane you and others will figure this out but uh, with that I'm gonna wrap up this today's comment of the day and take a few minutes more out of my pointless little miserable excuse of a fucking life to bring you my uh, doomsday sermon in which we're going to I will be reading from my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero Kurt Vonnegut from I believe the last book he ever wrote A Man Without a Country coming right up Smoke them if you got them, guys. We are so fucked. <laughs> so anyway, it looks like just right I see all of my hot weather. The cucumbers, the squashes, certainly the cantaloupes and the and the uh, watermelons. Got it right along the edge just a little bit of frost burn right along the edge of their leaves so uh, we dodged the bullet dodged the bullet here in paradise but look at those happy those happy uh, lettuce and turnip greens bye guys